Okay, we continue on with our reading of the Epistle of James, and we're in um, chapter 1, verse starting at verse 16. Um, you'll see in this work lots and lots of imperatives, and we see another one here, uh, with may negating it, may planasti. Planao is to wander, and so... Um, the verb generally doesn't is an intransitive verb. It doesn't normally go into the passive, but um, to be made to wander. O often Greek will use the passive as a kind of causative. So, do not be caused to wander. Sometimes translated, do not be led astray. So this is an imperative from planao, um, passive. Do not be led astray, my beloved brethren. Pasadosis. You can see from the root of this, it comes from didomi. Uh, this is the abstract noun, and it can just mean a gift, or quite possibly, and I think perhaps it's the case here, it means the act of giving, because we do have a, um, a word for gift coming up later on. Um, the, uh, so, probably the, the act of giving. So, every good act of giving and every perfect gift, there's a teleos root that the author's very fond of, uh, estin anothen, is from above. This has got this old then ending, this old ablative from, and ana or ano is up, and so it's from above. Now we get katabinon, which is a neuter participle. It's a neuter present participle from katabino. And it's neuter because it's agreeing with de Rome, um, Dorema here. Um, so, is from above, descending from the Father, turn a, a photon of lights. So, this is um, referring to the sun and the moon, the two lights in the sky. Um, so, it's a very in interesting expression. It's not one you, that I've seen elsewhere referring to God as the Father of Lights, um, but paraho, in whom, or perhaps with whom, that is, it is not in his nature, uk any, now any is is shortened form of enesti, and that's very common um, to shorten any in, in classical Greek, you can do that as well, to any for enesti, so there is in, so, with whom there is not in him, paralage, this is a variation or change. Or an aposchiasma, in other words, skia is the word for shadow. So, this is a, another word, an abstract here, a shadow of turning, literally. So, a shadow that is cast by turning. So, the point being is there's a reference here to the sun and the moon except um, the, the moon changes its shape, so it has variation, parallege. Um, sometimes you get a full moon or a crescent moon or no moon, um, and the shadow changes um, as the sun moves, so a shadow that's cast by turning. Uh, we get our word tropic, of course, is all connected with this. So it's a, this semi-astronomical terms. Um, this second word here is um, it's only here and in later Christian writers. So the idea is that God, unlike the photon, unlike the sun and the moon, which have variations and changing, uh, in God there is no variation or changing, says the writer here. Bulethes is a participle, but it's probably slightly fossilized here in just the sense of it, almost adverbial, intentionally. So having uh, having decided, but you can translate it as an adverb, so in, intentionally, on purpose. Apicuesen, this picks up the, the metaphor from the earlier verses up in 15. Um, this is to give birth to. So intentionally, he has given birth to us by a word of truth. Um, and we get ace to ani. This is the articular infinitive used with ace, uh, generally for purpose, and probably that's the sense here, with result at purpose. Um, so as 
us to be some sort of first fruit of his creation. So um, the, the word here has the sense of creation. The usual meaning of it is foundation, uh, but it's used in the Septuagint for creation or creatures. So for us to be a kind of tinner, uh, some sort of first fruit of his creation. So continuing on, the next um, verse begins with iste, which is probably an imperative from oida. From oida. So no, it's the um, second person plural from oida. So no, my beloved brethren. Um, it, it can also be a literary form of the just the indicative in fact but that would so that would mean you know my beloved brethren or it may be the imperative which is possibly more likely um, Esther we get another imperative this is the imperative from Amy this is the third person this is your usual Amy this is the third person singular imperative let be and the subject of it is pas anthropos. So let each man be tacos, quick. And we get this interesting use of ace top plus articular infinitive here. Um, so it's more as in regard to, it's not a purpose clause here, it's in regard to hearing, slow in regard to speaking, lalesai, and brados and slow. You get a different construction here with respect to anger, so slow to anger. And as often happens in James, he uses one word and he picks it up in the next sentence, so orge is repeated here. For the anger, andros of a man, uk ergazdatai, does not operate, does not work, the righteousness of God. Dio, this is from dear hop. Um, wherefore, on a, so this is um, short for dear hop, on account of which apothemenoi is from apotithemi, apotithemi, having put aside pasan ruparian. This again, interesting word, it's another metaphor from clothing, and the word turns up a little bit later on in that context, in fact, but it's a metaphor from clothing. It means filthy. And here it's the abstract noun, so it's filthiness. So for this reason, having put aside all filthiness and perisaean kakias, this uh, literally means an abundance of malice, an excess of malice, an abundance of malice. The old translation was a superfluity of naughtiness in one of the old translations, which is a lovely English phrase. So having put aside all filthiness and uh, abundance of malice in prauteti, this is from prautes. Uh, the diaresis simply means you pronounce this as two separate uh, vowels, prau rather than prau. And it's, um, it, it means meekness or humility. Uh, this is the dative singular, it's a third declension. Um, now, so having um, uh, so ha having done all that in the meekness, receive the m photon, the implanted word. Receive the implanted word. Uh, m photon is um, again a, it's more of a, a Christian idea than a Jewish idea. Uh, it means implanted or deeply rooted. So receive the deeply rooted word, the one with being able, so sigh in aorist infinitive, to save your souls. Um, Ginestha, Guinness there, another imperative, um, second person plural. So be doers of the word and not only hearers. There is a verb akroaamai, to hear. And this is the noun from that. So this is a first decl first declension. It's akrates, a hearer, and not hearers of the word. Paralogizomenoi. 
this again is is a um, another um, um, metaphor here this time from accounting it means false reckoning so it's often translated deceiving yourselves hotty because if someone is an acro artist there's that word we had minute ago we, we um, so if, if someone is a hearer of the word and not a doer upoietes uh, and not a doer of the word um, this man, epoiken, is that word we saw earlier in, in James. It's a, a good classical word, but not very common in the New Testament. He is like to a man, katanoonti. This means to look or take notice of, from katanoio. This is the dative singular participle, present, agreeing with Andri. So he is like a man who takes notice of the face of his birth, literally. So the face nature gave him the nat his natural appearance. So who looks at his his the um, the face of his birth in s optro in the mirror, and he takes notice um, of it. So there's the the, the verb again, kata no s, and this is the aorist now. And these are all nomic aorists. Uh, so they're past tenses, but in English we might take translate them by the present so for he takes notice of himself and this is a perfect but again it's um it's nomic so um, he, he goes away and euthios immediately epilathetot is from epilanthanomai epilanthanomai he forgets and he forgets hopoios ain what sort of man what sort of person ain he was but the one he parakupsas this is an aorist participle from parakupto it means to bend down to look carefully at by bending down and translated by peering perhaps uh, looking into so the one peering into the perfect law the nomon teleon, um, and then in opposition to that, the perfect law which is of freedom. So the one looking into the perfect law of freedom and paramanus and abiding by it, remaining in it. This again is an aorist participle. These are all nomics as well. These are all nomic aorists essentially here. Uh, Uk akroetes picks up this word again. Um, uh, not a hearer. Epiles mones. This is connected with the epilanthanomai. This is the abstract noun from that verb. And it's in the genitive here. So it's a defining genitive. This is a very literary use of the genitive. Um, some might say it perhaps as a semitism. Uh, a hearer um, of forgetfulness. So you translated it in English by a forgetful hearer. So not, there's the participle here, not having become a forgetful hearer, but a poietes ergu, a doer of the word. This man, um, Estai, will be Makarios, blessed ente poiese in his doings, in his, in his action, in what he does. This is only here in the New Testament, this abstract point. This is from poiesis. It's not the verb, it's the abstract noun. Poiesis, the abstract noun. And this is the dative singular here. And that's up to verse 25.